Sarah is just precious. She did great in school. She was in accelerated classes, had a lot of friends. In eighth grade, Sarah started skipping school. I was 12 when I first started drinking. I was in junior high school, a little awkward, didn't fit, quite fit in. I don't think it was more than seven or eight months before I started blacking out. That time, my ex-husband and I had just split up. My brother had just been sent to Lathrop Youth Camp. My mom was kind of trying to set a lot of boundaries. I'd asked if I could go to a party. My mom was like, absolutely not. She basically just told me what I could do with myself. I went to the party, came back three days later. So I thought, OK, it's time for tough love. And when I went to open up the door, the locks were changed. And that backfired. From that perspective, being 14, I thought that she didn't want me back. And from that time on, she was gone for two and a half years. <laughs> I went back to the people's house that I had been partying with, and they were all shooting up. And so I started shooting up speed with them pretending like I'd already been doing it for a long time. When people were like, oh, have, have you ever done this before? Oh yeah, all the time. I need help doing it, I can't do it by myself. When I was 15, I was raped twice. I learned that in order to feel safe, I would find men that were very abusive to me, but they would protect me from everybody else. Because, you know, all those horrible things that you think happen to runaway kids really do happen. She told me stories no mother really should ever know about their own daughter. First time I went to rehab, I was 14. I was the only one that was a runaway. A lot of people couldn't relate to my experiences. They felt sorry for me, which made me feel sorry for me. But I didn't think I needed treatment. It was always to escape from something. It was never to get clean from drugs. You know, I would be on probation, or I was in a really violent relationship, so I was trying to use treatment as a way to save myself from that. At one point, I took six urinalysis tests a week, and I passed every one of them, but I wasn't clean. You just get very, very creative. I showed up in court, the judge just looked at me and he said, if you complete Stout Street, you won't have to go to prison. He said, but if you leave one day early, I will make sure you do every last day in prison. And I totally believed him. Rio Stout Street's a recovery community. Our intent is to give people a chance to change, to be a part of something that's bigger than themselves, something they're not used to. A lot of times, residents will say they're coming, but the addiction's still dominating their life so they don't come in. We don't judge that. We don't look at that as, oh, this is a weakness. This is somebody who's not sincere. It's addiction. And the addiction constantly defines the character of the people we get. They all come in with the attitude, you don't know me, and you can't help me, and you know, and everyone in this place has a real common link, and, and addiction is, is the story. At the end of the day, it's an equation that you work backwards. So you have this issue, where does that stem from? That we start backtracking to see where the dysfunction comes from. I had such trust issues. And here, it was, it was a safe place for me to learn how to trust. There's a lot of guilt and shame attached to addiction. You know, people haven't, you know, they haven't held themselves in a level of integrity for the longest time in their lives. It was a safe place to learn that there's going to be consequences for my actions, but it's going to be a consistency that makes me feel safe. I mean, who better to counsel an addict than somebody that's been there? They know the hopelessness, the worthless feelings. And they also know when that little ray of hope comes around, how to support that. You know, eight months to a year is where clients in this facility finally understand, oh, I can be vulnerable. I can trust in the system. At 10 months, I was like, I'm going to try this. I was getting this structure, this discipline, just a lot of skills that I never had. She 
was going to school, she was working. I started working at Acme two weeks before I went to re-entry. She was a receptionist here. I could pick up the phones and everything. Very focused when she came here with where she was going forward in her life. When Sierra started, she didn't even know how to use an email address. It's inspiring to watch her journey and she, she's unstoppable. I knew Sarah when I was going through a divorce and it was a struggle and a change and knowing that she could make these changes enabled me to know that I could do it. She was going to school and I started back at school and um, I just knew that if she could do it, so could I. It inspires me to keep using Stout Street because we see people like Sarah that have made a change in their life and have turned it around so much. And we do have other people here from Stout Street that have worked out really well and this is their career now. It's a win-win for us and them. You emotionally feel so much better about yourself that you start to believe that maybe I can participate in society. Maybe I can function. It's the coolest thing there. I was 31 when I came into Stout Street. Scared, no education, no job skills seven felonies. I felt like the most lost person in the world. It's been a miracle. You know, my life is so, has changed so much. I have my life back. I have a life now. I didn't used to have a life. The whole program inspired so much hope in me that Sarah was really going to succeed this time. And she did. She exceeded beyond my expectations. Sarah is the definition of our goal. We want, you know, everyone to finish Stout Street, put their best foot forward, be challenged. It, you know, it saves lives, it changes people. It's not like somebody just comes in here and they get clean from drugs. People come in here and they change. They change from the very core being. Thanks to the help I got at Stout Street, my life is awesome. She's got her bachelor's. She's worked for various different treatment centers. Now, she's going for her master's. So when we talk inspiration and we talk Sarah, they're side by side. It, it's the definition of our goals. You know, we want everyone to be like Sarah, everyone.